Hi, welcome to Italco Tech. I'll be talking about 5G today and we'll cover various aspects which are important related to 5G. 5G is originated by a partnership project which is known as Third Generation Partnership Project which is a cooperation and a community among different telecom standards body. 5G is basically, which is also known as fifth generation, is basically focusing uh, on innovation in telecom radio access or the core network. It is also focusing on interoperability between the 3GPP and the non-3GPP networks. There are different releases which are time to time updated, published by 3GPP, be it release 15, 16, 17, now we are on 18, and it keeps on evolving the technology. What exactly is 5G? 5G is focusing on providing better services as compared to what we are providing in 3G or 4G. So it is focusing on providing the higher throughputs, which is also named as an enhanced mobile broadband. It is focusing on providing a low latency services, which is focusing on a mission critical kind of applications, which is related to e-health and focusing on a self-driving vehicles. Then it is focusing on providing the machine to machine communication where the massive or the billions of devices needs to be connected to the network and which is precisely the case in, in, in terms of smart city or smart home or smart buildings. There are different important aspects which are captured in 5G, be it related to edge computing, the virtualization, cloudification, machine learning, AI, uh, and, and, and the robust connectivity. We'll talk about all that in the coming slides. Why do we need 5G? Because now the whole ecosystem is changing the connectivity is now paramount in each and every, every aspect. For any industry, be it manufacturing, we know that industry 4.0 is evolving and it is requiring a robust connectivity which cannot be provided with the legacy networks. Also, we need a more uh, flexible ecosystem where we can, which can be a financially viable networks for any telecom operators. We need a kind of virtualized network where we need to move from the proprietary hardware to the commercial off the shelf concept where we need to not need not to stick to one of the one of the supplier uh, also we need to focus on improving the efficiency of the spectrum which is highly uh, adaptable in 5g highly flexible in 5g also some kind of intelligence needs to be incorporated to improve the performance of the network and this performance is right from the customer experience perspective from the opex capex from the business perspective and it, it makes the network more intelligent and usable for future. 5G is also making the cities more smart, smarter and it will help to overall boost the economy of the countries. Globally, if we see 5G can contribute to 1.3 trillion USD dollars to the global economy by 2030. We have emphasized on top eight countries here, which is contributing to 1.3 billion dollar and trillion dollars, sorry. And then we are focusing on the different use cases here we are focusing on the enhanced mobile broadband, which is catering to the maximum uh, kind of proportion in terms of use cases. And then uh, EMBB, FWN, machine to machine type communications follows. There are different building blocks of our 5G, right from the radio interface, if you talk about from the left side, there is a flexible frame architecture as compared to the legacy network of 4G where the subcarrier spacing is fixed of 15 kilohertz. Here we have a flexibility going from 15 up till 240 kilohertz. And that gives the leverage that leverage the overall flexibility and providing a better services be in terms of throughput or in terms of um, the latency. Also, if you look at the wide bandwidths, we have two different frequency range defined in 5G, right from the lower band to mid band. And we can go up to millimeter wave, which go up to 52 gig or 52 gigahertz. And the, and the kind of carrier spacing we have, it goes up to 400 megahertz, and that's how we can achieve 20 Gbps in, in 5G. Also, the advanced antenna techniques are incorporated and are much better as compared to that in the legacy networks. So new features have been added up, different kind of antenna elements, higher range of antenna elements, going up beyond 128 to 56, and then it gives a higher gain, more beam forming, and better uh, adaptability uh, which is improving the end customer experience and providing the better services on ground. On the, on the radio side, there is more flexibility again. We have more openness in terms of the baseband uh, and one baseband unit, which is currently a black box, a proprietary box is being divided into the, uh, uh, the central unit and the distributed unit, which is 
further dividing the different functionality so that whatever the functionality required closer to the RU, that will be kept closer to the RU, which is there in the DU. And if there are some kind of QoS or some kind of connectivity related towards the core network, which will be kept at the centralized unit, centralized unit can be kept anywhere at, at the site, edge, com edge location, or maybe at the regional location. There is a flexibility of, of putting all these devices or the nodes at different locations, depending upon the kind of service we want to provide. And accordingly, we can achieve the different uh, services are also called as a network slicing in, in case of 5G, which is not achievable in, in 4G. In core also, there is a segregation, this segregation of the user plane and the control plane, uh, which is similar to that has happened in, in the core, in the radio network. If we look at the architecture, it is, we just talked about the in 4G, it's more about, uh, we have the black box or the proprietary hardware, which is baseband unit, which is now disaggregated between the DU and the CU. And we have a flexibility of putting them apart anywhere between uh, the cell site or the, or the edge location, or maybe at the regional location. Virtualization has been used here to, so as to, uh, one is commercial off the shelf concept. Second is to uh, use the hardware the way we want to use it for. We can use it for any kind of functionality. There is no restriction or a binding to stick one hardware to a particular software as what is happening today in a proprietary system. Then for the cloudification, with the use of that, we can have uh, more robust uh, architecture. We can have uh, scale up, scale down the capacity as and when required without having most of the underutilized hardwares in the network. Then what kind of different deployment options we have? Either we can go for the standalone. Standalone means where we have a RAN and core belongs to one technology only. So option one is basically LTE, where we have 4G, 4G core, which is EPC, evolved packet core. And then we have a 4G node B, which is E node B. Option two is standalone 5G, where we have a 5G core precisely. And then we have 5G node B, which is G node B. Option three is somewhere in between, which is uh, more important for the brownfield networks where 4G is currently present and we are putting up 5G in phases. There we can go with 4G E node Bs as well as 4G EPC in place. And on the top of that, we'll connect 5G G node Bs. So here the radio network is basically we are adding up, but we are keeping the same core network as that of 5G, 4G. And we are just connecting the G node Bs and routing it through E node Bs back to the EPC. So we can have different options. Four and seven option is basically is the route towards going the standalone option two. So it is somewhere in between option uh, three and option two. So this is broadly what uh, we is basically the 5G and how we can uh, how we can put it in in uh, perspective. Thank you very much.